Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. To those who are new, I am Engineer J. I I am a civil engineer and I am also currently teaching as engineering professor. And in this video, we will learn one of the important processes in computing for the slope and deflection of beam. We have here the conjugate beam method. Now in my other videos, we had moment area method and double integration method as one of ways in computing for the slope and deflection of our beam and I have uh, posted the link in the description below if you wish to watch. But in this video, um, we will discuss the process on computing for slopes and de deflection using conjugate beam method. But what is conjugate beam method and what is the method of analysis? Now, conjugate beam method, this one is developed by Otto Moore in 1868 and then the relationships between the moment equation, or that is the moment, and the slope and deflection have the same form as that of the relationship between load, shear, and bending moment. So in other words, in conjugate beam method, the relationship between the, the moment equation, the slope and deflection is also the same with the relationship between the load, shear, and bending moment. So how are we going to... Uh, relate or how are we going to apply conjugate beam method in finding slope and deflection now in conjugate beam method we will just convert our real beam into a conjugate beam so we change our real beam into what we call conjugate beam now to convert our real beam into conjugate we need also to change the supports and we need also to change the load now in conjugate beam we will basically um, changed our load by adapting our moment um, diagram as our new load diagram okay now for the support we will be changing the supports according to the slope and deflection availability so how are we going to convert the support now if our real beam has a fixed support let's say that is our point a now, in converting our support, which is fixed, to a conjugate equivalent support, now we know that at point A, we do not have slope, okay, that's equivalent to zero, and we do not have deflection as well. Hence, we have zero value for slope and deflection. Now, take note, in conjugate beam method, our slope is basically equivalent to the shear at the same point. So, therefore, at point A, our shear is equal to zero that is for conjugate beam and uh, for deflection that is equivalent to the moment in the conjugate beam hence we have our moment there is equal to zero now upon looking at this condition if we do not have shear as well as if we do not have moment that means we have a free end so we change our uh, fixed support into a free end so that means we remove our support at A and then um, change that into free end okay so that is the equivalent of fixed support to a conjugate uh, beam support now what if we have free end at point A that means we do not have support so at point A we know that we have a value of slope that means our slope there is not equal to zero and we also have deflection at point a so therefore deflection is not equal to zero that means our shear and moments are not equal to zero okay so upon looking at this condition we know that that the support a support which contains shear and moment is basically a fixed support so therefore we will change um, our support at A here into a fixed support because as we all know if we have a fixed support we definitely have a shear and a moment okay so that's how you convert um, a real beam into a conjugate beam but what if we have a hinged and a ruler support um, on our real beam so to convert that into a conjugate beam now we know let's say if these are point a so we know that at point a um, we have slope okay so our slope is not equal to zero but we do not have deflection that means 
our shear should not be equal to zero, but our moment is equal to zero. Since um, the only support that contains shear but without moment is basically hinged and a ruler also. Okay, so therefore, there would be no change in the support. So, they would remain as hinged and a ruler when we convert our real beam into a conjugate beam. Okay, so there would be no change in terms of support. But what if we have an interior uh, supports? We have interior ruler and interior hinge. Now, at the interior support, let's say this is our point A, we know that at that point, our slope is basically not equal to zero, but of course, our deflection is equal to zero. So that means our shear is uh, not equal to zero, but our moment is equal to zero. That means um, to convert that into our conjugate beam, that would become an internal hinge. Because as we all know that at internal hinge, we have a value of shear, but we do not have a value of moment. But what if we have an internal hinged on our real beam? Let's say it's our point A. Now, take note at point A, um, definitely we have a slope. So therefore, our slope is not equal to zero. And we also have deflection. Okay, so therefore, deflection is not equal to zero as well. So that means our shear and moments uh, during our conjugate beam are all equal to are all not equal to zero. So upon looking at this condition, we know that um, our support there is basically an interior a ruler because at interior ruler, let's say it's our point A, we know that we have the value of shear and we also have a value of moment. Okay, so this is how you are going to convert our support into a conjugate beam. So now let's try to analyze structure Let's try to solve problem using conjugate beam method. Now we have uh, this first example here. We have to use the conjugate beam method to determine the slope at end A and the deflection at point B. So of course, the first thing we do here is to draw the shear and moment diagram of this beam. Now if you are not familiar on how to compute or how to draw the shear and moment diagram, I have posted the link on my discussion of my shear and moment diagram in the description below. So, but first we have to compute the reactions at A and D. So we have here, um, this is our AY and this one is our DY. Okay, so we can sum up moment at D is equal to zero. Counterclockwise moment are positive. So we have 12 AY, this one is negative plus 270 times 6 plus 180 times 3 and this equals to 0 and that means our AY here is basically equal to 180 kilo newton. So that is going upward because we came up positive answer for AY. Now to compute for the DY that is basically summation of forces vertical is equal to 0 upward forces are positive we have here ay plus dy minus 270 minus 180 this equals to zero now we also we already know the value of ay which is 180 and we can now compute the value of dy by summing up all the forces and that we have the value of dy which is equal to 270 kilonewton. And that, since we came up positive answer, that means we have an upward force dy. And our assumption that dy is, is going upward is correct. So we have now the ay and dy values. So we can now draw first the shear diagram. So we will be using area method here to expedite the process. Our ay here is basically 180. And dy here is equal to 270, correct? So we can first start at point A. So we have 180, which is going upward. So we have here 180. That is our shear 1. Now for our shear 2, we just 
um, since we do not have a loads within A to B, so we can um, set that as our a straight line, or that means we have a zero degree order um, shear diagram between A and B, and then at um at point b we have a force which is going downward that means we have 180 minus 270 this would give us negative 90 so we have negative 90 here and since we do not have load within b to c so therefore um, that is a zero order a shear diagram there and since we have 180 Okay, so our shear tree at C, we have negative 90, and since we have 180, which is going downward, that means we have minus 180, this would give us negative 270. So we have here negative 270, and we have um, zero degree um, diagram within C to D, and at point D, we have a dy, which is 270, so therefore, shear at point D is equal to negative 270, and since our dy is going upward, that means we add, we have negative 270 plus 270, this equals to 0. So, we end at 0 shear. So, that means we have correct shear diagram. Now, we have now already drawn the shear diagram, so let's proceed uh, to um, our moment diagram. So, in this case, we will be using again area method uh, to expedite the process since our point A is hinge, so therefore our moment at point A is equal to zero, so we begin um, with a zero moment. Okay, so our, our moment one is equal to zero. Moment 2 is equal to 0 plus the positive shear diagram, this one. That is, we have 180 times 6. This would give us our moment 2 is equal to 1080. So, we have here 1080. And for our moment 3, we start with 1080. Then minus, since we have negative um, shear diagram or shear area, that is we have 90 times 3, this would give us 810, so we have here this one 810, and the unit is of course that is in kilonewton a meter, and at moment 4, we start with 810, then since we still have negative area, this one here, so we have minus 270 times 3, this would give us 0. So that means we have a 0 moment at point D, and that um, could be justified by the fact that at point D, we have a ruler support, which is our moment there is equal to 0. Okay, so we have now the uh, moment diagram. So, and then we convert our real beam, this is our real beam, into a conjugate beam. Now, take note our supports here are hinged and a ruler. That means if we convert that into a conjugate beam, that would remain as hinge and a ruler respectively. So, therefore, at point A, we have here hinge and we also have a ruler support. There would be no change in the type of support. Now, for our load here, now, as what I have uh, mentioned, our load diagram here would be our moment diagram. Now, the direction of our moment diagram here, or our load diagram here, would be upward, since we have a positive coordinates of our moment diagram. So therefore, our load here will be going upward, but our length here would also remain as 12 meters, okay? In which um, we have here 6 meters from our A to B, okay? Um, we, ca we, we would remain the uh, designation of points that one okay so again we have now our new beam this one is what we call our conjugate beam now our first question is we have to compute the slope at point a 
Okay? The slope at point A. So, to compute for slope at point A, we will just basically need to compute the shear at A. Okay? So, how are we going to compute the shear at A? Basically, that is just the reaction at A. So, we assume that we have a downward reaction at A. We have AY, which is going downward. And at point D, um, we assume as well that our um, reaction is going downward. So, we have dy. So, to compute for the slope, basically, we just need uh, to compute ay. Okay, so how are we going to compute ay? So, basically, you can just sum up moment at point D. So, we can sum up moment at D is equal to 0 counterclockwise positive. That would give us positive ay times 12. Okay, then... Then the load, now take note we have an irregular load shape since we need to um, compute the moment arm or the center of that slope, we'll, we'll have to um, divide this shape into several triangles. So basically we can just um, cut this triangle, group this triangle here, this triangle, this one, and this triangle. So we would have three triangles and one rectangle. So this is, this is my strategy in order to come up with a um, load resultant because we will be needing to compute for the centroid later on. So again, we have to um, compute first the resultant of this triangle, okay? This triangle here in which we have, this is um, negative because the resultant um, creates a moment or it creates a clockwise moment. So we have 1 half times 1080, that's the area of the triangle, times 6. And the centroid, so if we draw the centroid, so our resultant would be at this point, which is 1 third from B, so we have 1 third of 6, okay? And if we add the distance of B from D, we have a 6 as well. So, the centroid would be 2 plus 6, since one-third of 6 is 2, so therefore we have 8, correct? So, we have 8. And next, um, for this triangle, so we have here minus one-half of, now the height would be only this one, which is the difference of 1080 and 810. So, that is 1080 minus 810, that would be the height, times the length, which is 3, correct? Then uh, times the moment arm, which is 3 plus, now take note, our resultant of this triangle is located 2 thirds from C, correct? So we have 2 thirds of 3 meters, okay? So therefore, we have 2 plus 3, so we, since that is from C, we have 2 meters, and C to D, we have a 3 meters. That would give us 5 meters from D. So the resultant is located 5 meters from D. And lastly, we have uh, this triangle, uh, this triangle here. So we have a minus 1 half of the resultant, that is the height is 810, times the length, which is 3, times the resultant, the resultant of this triangle is located two-thirds of three, correct? So that means we have a two. And uh, lastly, we have um, the last area, which is this uh, rectangle. That is, we have minus the area of the rectangle, which is 810 times three, times the moment or times the moment arm the moment arm is the location of our um, resultant is 1.5 from c that is one half of three then since we have three meters from d so that means we have 4.5 as the distance from d to the resultant okay and of course this equation equates to zero so our ay here is equal to 3,442.5. Now, what would be the unit? Now, take note, the unit of our 810 and 10,080 are all in terms of kilonewton meter because this one is moment, correct? And our 6 here, which this one is mom 
meter okay and our a tier is meter as well so that means this one is in kilometer cubic a meter correct but since we divide everything into 12 since if we equate our equation to the right side we would have um, over 12 as the denominator so that means since 12 is in meters we can cancel out a meter this one so the remaining unit would be in terms of kilonewton meter squared okay so this would be our unit for ay now again ay is basically um, would give us the slope at point a now what would be the slope at point a now take note if we isolate a uh, point a or if we cut at joint a so we would have our shear now take note since we have a downward reaction at a so therefore our shear there is basically also downward okay that is downward and and shear there is basically equal to a y okay and that again that is at point a and this is our slope at point a as well so therefore our slope at a is equal to 3442.5 kilonewton meter squared over the flexural rigidity we have a modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia okay so this would be our general form for our slope and and this in terms of the flexural rigidity but uh, take note what would be the direction of our slope would it be counterclockwise or clockwise direction because we will be needing that so that we would know that the curvature of our deflection would it be concave upward or concave downward so how are we going to determine the direction now for the sign convention of conjugate beam method now if we have a positive shear okay positive shear that means we have a positive rotation and the positive rotation is in counterclockwise direction this is our sign convention that we need to follow okay and if we have a negative shear that means we have negative slope or our rotation there is basically in clockwise direction but how are you going to determine the sign of our shear now do, do you think that this shear is negative uh, since because since this is acting downward no we should not um, base on the direction of our shear just to know whether this this shear is positive or negative so for our shear if you remember our discussion on on shear diagram so we have a positive shear when we have this type of shear okay if our shear is acting downward to the um, left side of any point that means we have positive shear and if our shear is acting upward if that shear is um, acting on the right side of the point that means we also have positive shear as well now what if on the left side we have a upward shear and on the right side of our point we have a downward shear that means we have negative shear take note of that um, sign convention that we follow during our shear and moment diagram okay now in this case at point a since we consider our shear here at the right side of the point because when we consider the left side basically that is going upward so this orientation looking back at our sign convention this orientation is basically a negative shear okay so that means since this one is negative shear our slope is rotating clockwise so we have a clockwise rotation of our slope okay so that's how you are going to um, determine the direction or the rotation of our slope so that means at point a we have a clockwise direction of our tangent line so if this so therefore we have this curve okay 
and our tangent line would be this one and the angle is or the rotation is clockwise okay so this would be our initial bending at point a now um, we need uh, to compute the um, the exact value of angle by substituting the value of the modulus of elasticity and the moment of inertia so since we have given e and i so we have 3442.5 this one is in kilonewton a meter squared over our e is equal to 12.5 gigapascal so we can um, change that into newton over millimeter squared or equivalent to megapascal by by multiplying it by 1000 okay so let's multiply it by 10 raised to the 3 so we would have a newton millimeter square, squared now take note we need to be consistent with our um, unit so that we can cancel out the units if needed so multiplied by our i our i is 1.92 times 10 raised to the 10 and this one is in millimeter to the fourth so we have 1.92 times 10 raised to the 10 this one is in millimeter to the fourth now take note our numerator is in terms of kilonewton and meter so we need to convert this one into newton millimeter so to convert that into newton millimeter we multiply 1000 this first 1000 is to convert kilonewton into newton and multiply it again by 1000 squared to convert meter into millimeter so all in all we multiply the numerator by 1000 cube okay so we can now compute our theta a which is equal to 0 0.0143 now what would be the unit so we can actually cancel out a newton and newton okay and millimeter squared and millimeter squared uh, remaining would be so however we have millimeter squared on the numerator okay we can cancel this out this out so therefore um, we have unitless um, slope that means we have a radian as our unit okay so therefore the rotation of our tangent line at point a is basically 0 0.0143 radian Okay, so to convert that into degree, you just basically need to multiply it by um, 180 degrees over pi. That would give us 0 0.822 degrees. So basically, this is quite small. So that means um, we have now the answer for our um, slope at A. So again, this one is in clockwise direction. Now, what if we are asked to compute the rotation at point D? So, you, need ju you just need to um, determine the force dy by just summing up forces vertically. Once you compute for dy, then you have now the angle or the slope at point D. But, but what would be the direction? So, in the case that our dy is going downward if we compute or if we determine the internal shear at point d we would have our shear at point d which is going downward as well okay and in our sign convention if our shear is going downward on the left side of that point that means this is a positive shear or i will no longer solve dy so you can solve dy so our angle D here would be 0 0.016 radian and the rotation would be counterclockwise. So I will leave that to you. You can answer, you can solve our angle at D. So again, um, to compute for rotation, you just need to compute the shear at that point. Now our next question is compute the deflection at point B. So to compute the deflection at B, we will just com be computing here the internal moment at B. So we will cut at point B. So we will cut at this point. You, you can isolate either the left side of B or the right side of B. But in this case, now to expedite the process, I would um, 
consider the free body diagram of the left side of B. So I would have this one. And we know that we have value of AY there, which is 3,442.5. And if, if we cut at B, of course, we would have our shear at B. Okay, and we also would also have a internal moment at B. But in this case, I would assume that our uh, moment here would be positive bending. Okay, that is um, rotating counterclockwise on the left side of our point B because we know that bending would be positive if it creates smiling curvature and that would consider as negative if it creates a frowning curvature. So we have here moment B. Now we have the value at the peak of our triangle which is 1080. Now the distance is 6 meters. Again, we compute the moment at B that would give us, of course, summation of moment at B is equal to 0, counterclockwise positive, that would give us, of course, the moment at B, the internal moment at B, plus 3,442.5 times 6, then minus, of course, the um, resultant of that load, we have one half of 1080 times 6 times the moment arm of the resultant from point B would, okay, if this is our resultant, so the moment arm would be one third of 6, and this would, of course, give us um, one third of 6 is 2 meters, so we have 2 here. So, and this equals to 0, of course, our moment B is equal to negative 14,175. Now, what would be the unit? Now, take note, the unit of our our 3,442.5 here, which is our AY, is kilonewton a meter squared. And we have a 6 here, the unit is in terms of meter. So, that means our moment B here would be um, kilonewton cubic meter. Okay, so that would be the unit of our deflection. But what would be the orientation of the deflection? Would it be going upward or acting downward? Now take note, since we have a negative moment, that means we have incorrect assumption of the direction of our moment B. That means our moment B here should be in a clockwise direction because our first assumption our moment is in counterclockwise and since we came up negative answer that means our moment b is rotating clockwise so we have to change the direction now for our sign convention for conjugate b method if we have a positive moment that would give us upward slope or upward deflection but if we have negative moment that would give us a downward deflection but how at but what should be the basis of positive moment and negative moment so going back on our discussion on the moment diagram positive moment is when our moment creates a smiling curvature okay so we have moment which is rotating um, counterclockwise on the left side of a point and negative moment is rotating um, or creating a frowning curvature or that means our moment is rotating clockwise on the left side of that point. So that means in this case, is our moment is rotating clockwise on the left side of B, that means we have negative moment and that we have a downward deflection. So therefore, our deflection at B is going uh, downward. However, we need to compute the exact deflection. So we have deflection at B is equal to 14,175 kilonewton cubic meter over the flexural rigidity. Now we have 12.5 times 10 raised to the 3. The unit would be in newton millimeter squared. Our I we should be 1.92 times 10 raised to the 10, that is in millimeter to the fourth. But since we have a different um, units with the numerator, so we have to convert the numerator into Newton millimeter cube. 
So, to convert kilonewton into newton, so we multiply 1,000, that is to create this one into newton. And to convert cubic meter into cubic millimeter, so we need to multiply it by 1,000 cube, and this should be in millimeter cube. So, we can cancel out newton. Then, we can cancel out millimeter squared, and the remaining would be here, would be in millimeter squared. But we have millimeter cube on the numerator, so we can cancel out millimeter squared. And the remaining on the numerator is millimeter only. So that means we have our final unit, which is in terms of millimeter. So the deflection here would be equal to 59.063 millimeter. And this one is going downward. So we have now the answer for the deflection at B. So we have the deflection at B, which is at the midpoint, that is 59.063. And that ends our first example. Now, in the second part of this video, we will try to solve another example. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for more videos. Thank you guys and God bless.